Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Duality 9Xers around the world. Welcome back to another exciting episode right here on Duality 9X, where we do our best to separate fact from fiction. But real or fake, that's a decision you'll need to make. So today we're going to talk, we've got a lineup of some scary, creepy videos that I want you guys to comment on. Tell me what you guys think. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. If you guys are new to the space, please smash the like and subscribe. Comment away. And if you guys are ready, you got your thinking caps on, you got you have your beverage in place and you guys are strapped in. As you guys know, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Then without further ado, let's get it going. In the woods exploring when they heard this. An urban explorer and his friends were checking out this abandoned campsite when they came across this creepy old sign that says, Private, this is a place of prayer. Please respect our space. They decide it's better not to go any further and turn around to leave. But as they do, this happens. What the f***, dude? What the f***? There's not even an auto or so, eh? Hello? 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 What the f***? What the f***? Seconds after the scream, this tall woman holding an axe charges them. Luckily, some cops happened to be nearby that, and took care of it. That could have been dangerous, guys. I mean, that could have ended pretty horribly. No ifs or buts about that one. Next. All right, y'all. Check this video out. Dude is walking home when he noticed something. Guys, uh, this guy is awesome. Uh, yeah, he's got a lot of cool, cool videos. You, you gotta, you gotta subscribe to this cat. He's, uh, he's pretty good. Check it out. Odd about this person. Look closely. I don't have the original soundbite, but you can tell he does something to get her attention. And when she turns around and realizes he's recording, she shuns away immediately. Notice her eyes and her teeth. She reminds you of one of the vampires in Blade. She's truly like nothing I've ever seen. Part human, part demon possibly. I don't even know how to explain it. She's absolutely terrifying. Then notice as she pulls her hands out of her pockets, you can see that the tips of her fingers from about mid knuckle up are black, black as night. They almost look as if they've been frostbitten from the knuckle up. Do me a solid, y'all. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe, and follow. And I'm like asking you to ever folks. pay for my content. I'm actually just asking you to follow on Facebook, YouTube. Subscribe, please. Thank you. Enjoy the video. But it definitely isn't that. I don't know if these people are taking part in some sort of witchcraft or demonic type seances or devil worshiping or what's going on with them. But there's more and more of these people popping up. Is that up. Apple remember, earpods? The stories I posted not too long ago about people having encounters with beings or entities whose eyes were completely black. They would then stare at them and smile in an evil demonic smile. Well, one of these cases was worse than others. Y'all gonna think I'm fucking crazy. I'm walking down the street, walking back from the store. There's this guy probably about... 15 feet behind me, and you know how you can tell someone's walking behind you. I look back, and he's just looking at me. He stops when I stop. So I walk forward a little bit, and, you know, I keep walking like that, and I say, fuck this shit. I turn around, I go, what? What's your fucking problem? I swear to God, in my mother's grave, this guy's eyes was jet fucking black. Jet fucking black. I just sit there sm smiling like that, man. I fucking... Turn around, I ran. I said, this shit, dude, this shit. I come home, I'm sitting out there where my street is. Like that, that corner right there by the stop sign, that was we'll standing right there, dude. Come in here, get my gun, look out again, he's gone. That dude was not human. It didn't stop there. He got to the point where he even called the police three or four times. They told him to stop contacting them because every time he'd call them, the being or entity would just disappear. And it's really starting to get to his mental. He's on TikTok. So his TikTok goes by the name Trainwreck. And I went back to look and see if he had gained any progress on his problem. And it only seems to be getting worse. The first video I stumbled upon 
was this one. Check it out. Okay, look guys, seriously, look. Right there, right there. Right there, right there, right there. There the f he is. There the f he is, dude. I swear to the f man. Holy f shit. The motion sensor went off. There's a f you see that? You see that? Look at him. Can you see his f head? His f yeah, the arms are kind of like that. I told you. I told you. I told you. So here's a couple more clips. I want you to notice that as he goes on, he gets progressively worse until the final videos, which are just crazy. So make sure you stick around. Next video, you'll hear him talking about the smell, the smell of sulfur and how it's getting closer to the house. And then shortly after, things ramp up. Check it out. I'm so tired. No, it smells in the house now. Getting weird noises in the house. And I'm gonna try to catch some of it today. So after all the knocking and strange activity, it once again ramps up even more. And you can hear this thing literally growling. It sounds like it's on top of his house. Let me know what you think, check it out. We're gonna go live right now. Don't fuck I saw him again last night. That son bitch was looking in my window. On my screened in porch was looking in my window. Looking in my window. I don't know how it got on. I'm gonna die. So that's just a few short clips of what he's going through. And the last couple I saw just today, this morning, are even worse. His situation is getting bad. And as the story progresses on, you can see that he thinks he's starting to be overtaken by something, a demon. He's not sure who or what, but he believes it's a demon nonetheless. As you saw before, hearing weird growling noises, seeing yeah, things was... in his backyard, hearing knocks around his house. This all seems very authentic. If he's faking it, he's doing a really good job. I do not believe he's faking it. I believe he's being genuine, and I believe he's got a genuine haunting or demonic attempt of possession on his hands. What's more interesting is at one point, he actually claims to be encountered by men in black suits because he starts talking about Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which he lives nearby. He claims to see all kinds of weird things happening surrounding that base. And he actually makes an assumption that maybe, just maybe, these entities that he's encountering are coming from Wright Patterson in that they're using him per se to experiment with these entities to see what they're capable of or maybe even what type of super soldiers they can create out of them. Now, this is an alleged idea by him, but if he was contacted, it definitely begs the question, could this be the case? And of course, I've done my fair share of research as well. And the only thing I can kind of come up with is the black-eyed children, and obviously there's not just children, there's black-eyed adults that have to be invited in. This doesn't seem quite along the lines of that. I'm gonna go ahead and end it with his most recent video posted on his TikTok. It's crazy, y'all. Check it out. He's not allowed to play anymore. He's not allowed to play anymore. He's not allowed to play anymore because he's crazy. He's 
And as you can see with these last couple of videos I'm going to show you, he talks about how these entities infiltrate and take over body while you're dreaming. You want to know a secret? You want to know how we get in? It's in your dreams. You leave your bodies in empty vessels waiting to be filled. You just find the right one. You break it down and slowly break down the will. And then you're ours. They are where out there. And we will find you all. But I'm going to hit this by this. That's how we get in. That's how we get in. Through your dreams. The more you dream, the more we distract you with visions of what you want, dreams of someone that may have passed. You go away and we walk right in the door. So I've reached out to him. I want to see if I can get him on a live or something to talk to him. Regardless, we'll see what he says. But let me know what you guys think it is in the comments. This is a crazy story. It's going viral everywhere. Let me know what you think in the comments, what he could do to combat this whole issue. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Just stay tuned. Stay in the love. Stay in the light. Be kind to others. I am out. Wow. Um, lots to unpack there, guys. You know, this is not the only story I've seen. I've seen a lot of countless other people, you know, on, on the web, on social media. I don't know if it's if it's a means for them to be able to express what they're going through, uh, the pain, the, the feeling, the torment that they're going through day in, day out, you know, coped with a lot of other mental health related stuff that's kind of going on, perhaps maybe in their lives. But this this doesn't help. Um, there's some strange stuff kind of going going around us, and uh, I'd love to hear your guys' comments on this. Is this guy just a really good actor, or is this genuine? To me, it looked like it was quite genuine. Uh, however, his handle says train wreck, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it looks real to me, guys. All right. Here's an interesting story about a couple My wife and I went to Japan, to Japan for our honeymoon. I'd studied there for a while during college, so I knew the language pretty well, and we were financially stable enough to afford it. We had planned on exploring all of Tokyo. Being one of the largest and densely populated cities on the planet, it was almost like a world of its own. A country within a country with diverse districts that might as well have been their own towns. For the first four days, we visited almost every part of the city. From the anime and manga shops of Akihabara, to the trendy department stores of Shibuya, to some downright bizarre themed cafes in Harajuku. But after spending so much time in the crowded city, we decided that we needed a little change of scenery. There were a bunch of parks in Tokyo, but they were all crowded by people who had the same idea. We wanted to take a proper hike in a forest to clear our minds after all the excitement in the city. And the closest national forest was a Okigahara a place most famous for people going there to commit suicide. Needless to say, we decided to go somewhere else. But with the way things turned out, it would have been safer if we had went to the suicide forest instead. On the fifth day of our So these guys are traveling to the suicide forest. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but uh, it's, it's a, it, it's, there's a lot of paranormal, a lot of like ghost related activity that happens. It's a, uh, it's a popular tourist place uh, destination in Japan, ironically enough, but it's also a very scary place as well, too. Lots of movies, lots of documentaries have been made about it. Maybe at some point I'll do a documentary or, or I'll do a video reaction video on, on some of this content. But check it out if you guys get a chance to. I mean, maybe not visit, you know, physically go there, but check it out online is, I guess, what I'm trying to get to. But let's get back to the video. Honeymoon, we took a train ride to Kyoto a city famous for its adherence to ancient Japanese culture in contrast to the modern metropolis that was Tokyo. We found a mountainous forest with a hiking trail of the rural area and set out to appreciate the natural beauty of Japan. The rough path took us up the mountains. Flanking us on either side were towering green bamboo trees that made the vibrant purple and pink of the occasional wildflower or Sakura Blossom all the more striking. We walked the path until late in the afternoon, at which point 
we decided it was time to call it a day. But on the way back, something among the bamboo caught our attention. A fox was watching us from the bamboo forest with blue eyes that almost looked like they were glowing in the shade. This wasn't the typical red fox you could find all over Japan. Its fur was smooth and a shade of shiny silver I'd never seen on any animal before. Naturally, we both took out our phones to take a picture of the anomaly of nature. The moment we did, it darted back into the bamboo forest. We knew it was a bad idea, but the color of the fox was so beautiful that we couldn't help but try to follow it for a picture to show off to our friends back home. The fox was fast, but not so much that we ever lost sight of it. We were able to glimpse the back of its unusually big bushy tail as it scurried in front of us, gracefully darting in between the bamboo trees as we clumsily tried to keep up. We arrived in a clearing of the forest where a traditional Japanese cottage sat next to a waterfall that led down to a flowing river. We didn't even question why it was there or who would be living there. We were just relieved that we found some semblance of civilization after almost becoming a statistic. I knocked on the wooden pillar next to the rice paper door and shouted out a greeting in Japanese. Almost immediately, the door slid open and I was met with the second most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my life, next only to my own wife. She was a fair-skinned Asian woman with coffee-brown, almond-shaped eyes and a flawless, delicate face that most women could only achieve through Photoshop. She wore a fine silver kimono, fitting for our equally traditional house, and greeted us with a small bow. Good evening, she said in Japanese. How may I help you? Her Japanese was fluent, but I could tell that there was a bit of an accent to it. It wasn't any regional accent I knew. If I had to guess, she kind of sounded like a Korean person trying to speak Japanese. We got lost in the forest, I replied in my own heavily accented Japanese. Can you please help us? She gave me a smile that made my heart flutter against my will. Certainly. However, it is getting dark and the forest is dangerous at night. Would you care to stay the night here until tomorrow instead? I can lead you out of the forest then. I translated the conversation to my wife and we agreed to stay over. She introduced herself as Hana and even offered to serve us food. I tried to decline, but she insisted, and both my wife and I were hungry from our hike anyways. The food was some sort of meat with rice, accompanied by clay cups of green tea. Though we tried to mind our manners, we ended up scarfing the whole thing down in minutes. It was one of the most delicious meals I'd ever had in my life. She then led us to a small guest room and laid out two small futons for us to sleep on. My wife fell asleep almost right away, but I couldn't for some reason. It was odd, since she was usually the light sleeper and I've literally slept through storms before. I felt an inexplicable urge to get out for some fresh air, so I did. I quietly exited the guest room. To my surprise, Hannah was still awake in the living room. More of the same food she'd served us from before was still on the low dining table and she was in the middle of eating it. I hastily apologized for the intrusion in stuttering Japanese. She told me that it was all right in the same soft, polite tone she kept since we met. When she told me to sit down so that she could pour me some tea, I saw no reason to decline. I won't go into detail about what we talked about. Long story short, she tried to seduce me as my newlywed wife was sleeping right in the other room. My hormones screamed at me to take her up on her offer, and I felt my body burning with an almost supernatural compulsion to take her then and there. However, it was all drowned out by sheer disgust at the thought of cheating on my wife. I declined her offer to sleep with me in no uncertain terms. She didn't seem angry about it. Instead, a look of surprise spread across her face. Do you really love her that much? She asked me. Of course I do, I replied. I wouldn't have married her otherwise. There was a tense moment of silence between us. At that time, her surprised expression turned to a look of sorrow. I almost felt bad about making her like that, but nothing was going to make me betray the trust of the woman I loved. I really do like you, Hannah said before standing up, which is why... I have to ask you to leave. What? I asked surprised. Right now? Yes, she said firmly. Just follow the river downwards and you'll find a small town there. Don't worry, no harm will come to you and the moon is bright enough to light your path. Go now, take your wife and get out of here. I didn't dare question her with the way she said it. There was a strong tone of authority in her words that made me not want to defy it. I could have sworn that her eyes glowed blue in the dim light as she spoke too. I went back to the guest room and woke up my sleeping wife. I told her that Hannah just asked us to leave and we had to go now. She gave me an earful for getting us kicked out, but stopped when we returned to the living room. Hannah was nowhere in sight, and instead of the cozy cottage we'd arrived in, 
we were instead greeted with a derelict ruin covered in dust and cobwebs. Wow. Lying on the corner of the lifeless living room was the corpse of a man with strips of his flesh torn out of it, oh. the cracked bones beneath him. His cheeks had been completely removed, revealing only toothless gums. When we looked at the low dining table we'd been eating from just hours ago, we realized where all that meat and teeth went. In the bowls that Hannah had served us were white teeth and bone shards, topped by strips of flesh that still had human-like skin on one side. Oh my and in those clay teacups was a foul black-red liquid that gave off a pungent metallic odor that could only come from days old. Guys, that, that, this is just crazy, right? But it seems like he did all the right things. Let, let's check it out. Blood. We left the cottage, which had become a desolated ruin in Hannah's oh. absence. With no idea of where to go, I led us down the river as per Hannah's instructions. And true to her word, we arrived in a small town where we met some very surprised people. They told us that the abandoned cottage up the river was cursed and that no one who'd gone there had ever come out before. They told us how lucky we were to still be alive and contacted the authorities to get us back to our hotel in Tokyo. We cut our honeymoon short after that night. My wife is still recovering from the trauma of what she saw in Hannah's cottage, but I'll be with her all the way. Hannah would probably approve too. Had I not been faithful to my wife, I doubt she would have let me leave her cottage alive. He heard this. He was grabbing a snack when this happened. This boy was in the kitchen getting a snack when he heard this. He bolts upstairs to his mom's room panicking, and that's when it gets worse. He came busting in my room, jumping all over my bed, hiding in the corner, screaming and hollering, saying he didn't want to die. Somebody was in the house, somebody was in the house, telling me to get mine. We started hearing footsteps. I mean, big, heavy feet coming up the steps. I'm terrified. I throw my robe on. I push him into the room with his brothers. She then searches the house, but doesn't find anyone. Y'all looked at that camera, and I pulled up the last clip. And I heard that person on that camera say, how did you find me? My heart fell in my stomach. Ever since the incident, the no, poor kid can't even go downstairs by himself. That's, that's scary, guys. It is rumored that on August 12th, 1799, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte visited the Great Pyramid. After eventually making his way up to the so-called King's Chamber, Napoleon asked his guides and assistants to leave him so that he could be left alone inside. After a long period of time, Napoleon finally emerged from out of the pyramid looking rather pale. I when an aide asked guys. him if he had witnessed anything mysterious, Napoleon abruptly replied, no comment, and then whispered, that he never wanted the incident mentioned again. Now, just before Napoleon is exiled, he was on the verge of apparently confiding in his personal recorder or historian about what happened to him inside the Great Pyramid. He suddenly changed his mind and begins to shake his head and said, quote, no, what's the use? You'd never believe me. Wow. So I heard stories about this. Now, I don't know if there's stories, legends, folklore, myths, whatever you want to call it, but there's a lot of people that talk about this piece of history that Napoleon, the famous leader in France, had encountered while on one of his recent visits to, to Egypt. What happened in that pyramid? No one really knows. One can only wonder. But it's something that's definitely shrouded in mystery, but definitely sounds like a good video to, or or a good topic to explore, right? For for future future video content for sure. They were on vacation when, in the middle of the night, they saw this. This family was staying in a lodge out in the outskirts of Maine. When one night they noticed through the window a slender figure out in the dark approaching them. Wow, it's like like a skinwalker. Oh, could it be just like maybe a security guard or? 
they were on vacation when in the middle wow. of that's not something you want to see right when when on vacation you wake up in the middle of the night and you got some creepy person kind of staring at you through the window yeah this mechanic shop owner was checking his garage cameras when he noticed his employee talking to someone estoy revisando por la cámara del taller y este maestro está hablando solo lo voy a preguntar por cámara qué está haciendo aló Oye, disculpa, pero ¿con quién, ¿con quién está hablando? Juan explains that he was helping out a customer who got into an accident while street racing the night before. ¿Tú me estás hablando del accidente anoche? Claro. Juan, me estáis hueyando, ¿cierto? No, pues estoy contando a Carlos aquí, porque... Es que no estáis hablando con nadie, viejo. No, pues siempre se tengo que hablar aquí al frente mío, Juan. No estás hablando con nadie, Juan, y ayer los que chocaron murieron todos. Juan, no estás con nadie, sube y ven a ver las cámaras, tengo todo grabado. Was it a prank, or was he actually talking to a ghost? Wow. What do you guys what do you guys think? Like th can that happen? Does that like I don't know the authenticity of this particular clip, but that's pretty freaky if that's the case. Something compelled this individual to start taking video footage of where they were walking, right? So there must have been clearly something, some kind of suspicion about the possibility of encountering something like a spirit, perhaps? Is that what we saw on camera? So look. And I, I don't know... I don't know if that, uh, what they caught on camera, it looks like a ghost or a spirit of some kind, if it if their back was facing them. Uh, I'm not sure because it looked like they had a lot of hair and maybe it looked like, yeah, they were they were not facing the, the, the individual. So, you know, you hear about these, uh, these witches, especially in India a lot, you know, with the feet are backwards. They're called chirils. And... Um, you know, a lot of them tend to like to live in the woods underneath trees. And that's why they say never to go out late at night, especially where there's a lot of dense trees. And um, but yeah, just a theory, just a theory. But I'd love to hear your guys comments on it. What do you guys think? All right, guys, that's all the time that we have today. I want to thank you guys for uh, staying till the end. Uh, you know, please, uh, if you guys are new to the space, smash the like and subscribe, comment away. Um, there was a lot to unpack here. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So, uh, in the meantime and in between time, that's it guys. Another episode, another wrap before I start destroying my, uh, makeshift studio here. Again, thank you guys. And I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. So enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.